Okay, let's learn about some uh, primitive types. Rust has um, a lot of types, and um, yeah, even the primitive types, there are quite a few of them, because uh, Rust likes to be really, really correct, really accurate. And so, uh, you know, even the numbers, there are quite a few ways of, uh, of uh, picking a number to use. And these, um, we'll start with the integers, which are, you know, whole numbers, no, uh, no decimal. And um, you can see they either have an i or a u. And i, these are the signed integers. And the ones with a u are called unsigned. And uh, signed means plus sign and minus sign. So these ones can be positive or negative. But these ones uh, can only be positive. So they start at 0 and they go up to you know whatever, whatever number they can fit. And this uh, this number here, that is the number of bits. So a U8 is 8 bits, which means it's one byte. And uh, the larger it gets, the larger the number it can fit. Whereas the, um, the ones over here, this is the uh, probably the one that you're wondering, you know, what does that mean? U size and I size means 64 bits if possible. And that is because some people have a 32-bit computer and uh, you don't want to, sometimes you don't want to choose 64 bits if you think maybe their computer can't handle 64 bits. So uh, if not, then uh, 32 bits. That's what that means. So if you have a, you know, a program and you want to make sure that the, uh, the end user can use it, then you'll you'll probably be using U size and I size uh, a lot more. Um, and you'll want to avoid maybe these two and these two in that situation. Um, so yeah, you can see the big numbers can get really big, like the, the U8 is only up to 255, but this one, U128, that's the, the biggest number and it's very big. I don't even want to say that number. Um, and after that come the characters, and they're called chars or cars. I'm going to say char. Uh, they are interesting because Rust has Unicode support. So that means that, you know, regular English letters are fine. Spaces are fine. Cherokee is fine. Korean is fine. Japanese is fine. Emojis are fine. Cat faces are fine. There's a, there's a lot you can uh, you can fit into these. Um, now this is uh, this is interesting because let's see because we're going to start talking about casting, which is um, I'll show you what that what that is about. Uh, first, we'll start with this example. So you have um, you know we're making a variable here called my number. And we're saying it's 100, and you know you will wonder, you know, what what type is this? Because we have, you know, all these types, but we didn't tell it the type. Uh, what happens here is Rust will choose an I32 in this case. Um, if you don't need it to be, you know, some other number, it will assume that it's an I32, and then to cast it, um, we use this keyword called as and it's not really changing it's uh, it's treating it as something else so for example you know let's print first we'll print my number and by the way uh, this these curly brackets here this means take take the variable that comes after and put it inside here so we'll see what that looks like So this prints 100. Now let's say we want to change it to a U8. So now it is printing 100 as a U8, and it will look exactly the same because you know it's not telling us the type, but it's actually this time it's a U8. Now you can actually cast into a char, but uh, this won't work, and I'll show you why. Because we're starting with an I32. And it says, 
only U8 can be cast as char, not I32. And that's because there's no uh, there's no guarantee that it'll work because you know I32s can be really really big, and um, you know every every kind of uh, every kind of character has its own number in Unicode, starting with ASCII. So you know character number one will look like, like this, character number two will be this character, um, and it goes up to I think there's like sixty thousand right now, but uh, you know I32 goes a lot higher than that. So it can only guarantee that a U8 can turn into a char. So what you can do is a double cast. So you take my number, which is an I32, as a U8, and then take that as a char, and it will print the hundredth character on ASCII or on Unicode. And you can see that is a lowercase d. And then um, but one other way we can do it, of course, uh, is we tell it here to be a U8. So now we say we're making a variable a variable called my number, and it must be a U8, and it is 100. And then now we can get rid of that, and now it will take this U8, turn it into a char, which it is fine with. And there we go. And if you change the number to something like 90, you can see it'll be a different character. It is a capital Z. Okay, now length is a uh, length is really interesting. Now you remember I told you that <clears throat> A character must have a single quote like that. Otherwise, I think I told you that. Otherwise, it'll be a string. And the interesting thing about characters is they are all four bytes. And that's because uh, when you look at Unicode, the, uh, the space required is different. And uh, there's a little experiment here to show you how it works. Uh, these are not characters, these are strings, because they are you know, inside these double quotes, and strings can be any sort of length. And you can see there's, there's an A, uh, there's a German S set, there's a, you know, Kuni, Koku, Kuk, depending on how you pronounce this, and then there's, a, uh, there's an Egyptian letter here. And each of them has a different bite size. You can see this one here, it only takes one byte because uh, computers have always, uh, you know, been able to use these, and they're, uh, you know, they're quite small. And then as they get bigger and bigger, uh, we eventually started needing four bytes to show them. Uh, and a character must be able to accommodate, must be able to show any of these. So a character is always four bytes because sometimes they can be four bytes in length. And that's. Um, if you use, uh, you know, some other languages, sometimes you use this length, len or length, to uh, to get the size, and um, usually it'll tell you the number of characters. But in Rust, this means the number of bytes, not the not the number of characters. So uh, be careful of that. And so what you can do, actually, I'll start with this other example to show you how that works. So here is, uh, you know, we're, we're going to look at the number of bytes for these two. So this is a slice, and we just wrote hello. And, you know, these are just English letters, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Whereas this one down here, this is, uh, this is Korean, annyeong, plus a exclamation mark. And it's only three characters, but, uh, you know, this, each one is going to be more bytes. So let's check the number of bytes by running. And you can see, so this one is six characters and it's six bytes, but this one is uh, three characters, but it's it's longer in terms of bytes. It's seven bytes. So there's a little tip uh, if you want to know the actual number of characters. Uh, you don't use len; you use this thing here. And uh, by the way, these are called 
methods and we'll learn about them later but uh, this is just a tip for now if you want to know how many characters you do chars um, bracket and then count and if we run that we can see that hello here is six bytes and also six characters which is you know characters dot count which is uh, it'll count it like this one two three four five six whereas this one is slice two which is onion and uh, the length will be you know seven bytes but the character count will be one two three so that's how that works and we'll learn a lot more about uh, methods later on.